someone with albinism touched you. So I think that's the biggest thing because that also puts um that is also the biggest factor to people with albinism being discriminated because a lot of people feel like um feel like, you know, if this person touches me I'm gonna get it. If this person's close to me I'm gonna get it. Or if I just look at this person and not spit on the floor, I'm gonna have a child with albinism. So it's not it's not Someone in the right door. Hello, hello. Ginger. Love ginger. Um, it's been a while since um Sibe will come here now. It's been a minute, eh? Hey? It's, it's been, been a minute. I'm good, thanks. How are you? I'm good. Cheers, so how do you get there? Cheers. But this is the boring podcast. That feels so boring. <laughs> ah, it should be. <laughs> Should be. Yeah. All right. Why are you look? No, yeah, she's a soldier. Yeah, she's a. Huh? Thanks. <laughs> so nice to have you. Thank you for having me. I'm honored. Hopefully, it's all my right you. Hopefully, if it's not too boring. Hopefully, it's not boring. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So let's get straight to the conversation. Why are you blushing? Why are you blushing? I'm not blushing. Okay. So, um, I know you like educating people about albinism. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. So, what is albinism? Don't. You should prepare me so that I can get into my <laughs> teacher mode. So, um, basically, albinism is a skin condition. Just that, um, well, it's a skin condition and it affects the hair, the eyes, basically lack of pigmentation or well, melanin. So which causes melanin is just something that you have. The more of it that you have, the darker your skin gets. Okay, so melanin is what causes black people to be black. Yes, and white people to be white. White people have less melanin, black people have more melanin. So I have more melanin. You have more melanin than me. <laughs> but there's someone out there who has uh, more melanin than you. Okay, good. But I don't know. I don't want to say it's what causes people to be white and black, but it just causes <laughs> <laughs> the skin. The skin, yeah, the, the, the color of the skin. Yeah, that causes it to be darker or lighter with um, black people, the race black people, they're lighter black people, and they're darker black people. Mm. And you get with the white people, the people <coughs> where the white people which um, their skin is very fair, then they're like white people whose skin is not too fair, like it's a bit tanned and yeah. Mm. So I wouldn't say it's what makes people be black and what makes people be white. Yeah, because that just brings the whole race into a picture. Okay. So, so some of the challenges you you've had growing up um, with albinism. I think the biggest challenge is bullying. Bullying. Yes, um, you get bullied a lot mm -hmm. um, by your peers, your who are not your peers, the people you meet in the streets. Because you know, um, albinism is not rare as such, but you hardly find a lot of people with albinism in the same area mm -hmm. you know so yeah man i think um people don't even now people don't understand the whole idea or the whole thing mm -hmm. and some are scared because um, in other areas albinism when someone has albinism there's no or it's believed that that person is cursed mm -hmm. so when people meet a person with albinism it gets a bit uncomfortable for them and some even spit on the floor so that mm -hmm. they don't have um, kids uh, with albinism but it's believed that if you see something that you don't like or someone that you don't like or someone who's cursed you spit on the floor so that the curse doesn't come to you does that ever happen to you it has happened it has yeah. so yeah it's just that thing that 
the the more you grow and the more you understand that some people are not educated about this, the more you, the less it hurts, you know, because it's really quite um, it's it's scary, man. Like seeing people when you cross by people spit on the floor, it's like okay. Mm. You even start thinking if your life is not in danger at some point because you are literally a walking curse to their eyes. Mm. Yeah. So seeing that a lot of people are not educated about albinism um, and how to uh, live with people who have albinism, uh, what, what, what? And and well, you not that my platform is is big, too big, but I think um, every chance um, that I get or anyone else gets, I think it's an opportunity to give just a little time for education. And I think this topic of uh, albinism is also one of the most important uh, topics. So. What can you say to maybe educate people on albinism and, and that, like, or maybe educate people about people with albinism? I don't know if that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, no, you are making sense. I think the biggest thing is that to let people know that it's not contagious. Mm-hmm. People think that if I touch you, if you touch them, literally they're gonna get it. Let's get it. Stop, stop touching them, they'll get it. And it's not like that. Albinism um, isn't a genius. Two chromosomes when they get together, and you realize that you don't understand, but you get it, so you won't. So, <laughs> yeah, so it's a thing where it's a gene, um, and both parents should have it. Yes, it's an abnormal gene, but it comes from both parents. You're not just gonna get it because someone with albinism touched you. So, I think that's the biggest thing because that also puts, um, that is also the biggest factor to people with albinism being discriminated because a lot of people feel like um, feel like you know if this person touches me I'm gonna get it if this person sits close to me I'm gonna get it or if I just look at this person and not spit on the floor I'm gonna have a child with albinism so it's not it's not contagious and um, with that I believe that it will bring uh, more inclusion of people with albinism you know mm-hmm. into their spaces because And another thing is that we are as capable as anybody else, you know, even though um, also with <coughs> albinism you get your eyesight problems where you can't see very far, you know, it's glasses, contact lenses, whatever it mm. is. But um, I think with that, a lot of people, especially in corporate spaces, mm-hmm. it's deemed as if it's as if we are not capable to carry out certain issues. That's why you find that there are a lot of people with albinism that are struggling to find jobs, that are struggling to find permanent positions. So a lot of them are actually hopping from one leadership to another, one leadership to another, because you get leaderships where there are open people with disability, but when it comes to actually including them and making them permanent in the workspace. Mm. That's where there's a big of a struggle. And I think that um, people just think we are advocating for the social um, inclusion of people with albinism, but also we are asking for inclusion or we are advocating for inclusion in the economics and economic side, in the corporate spaces too. Because Mm. now if um, another thing where if I'm not being seen, if I'm not being seen in my corporate space, if I'm not being seen in the work environment, it's, in a sense, it excludes me from opportunities. Because if you and I are working the same position and we're working towards a certain promotion, but the manager feels like, no, this person has albinism, her eyesight is bad, and um, her skin is bad, then she won't be able to perform certain um, tasks. tasks of the job, you know. So it's also something that we are advocating for, inclusion in the workspace. And um, yeah, man, 
think that's um, the two biggest things. So one other thing I've noticed is that people with albinism, they tend to um, have some some community of some sort. Um, do, do, do you think that is important to, to have or do you think somehow it causes other people not to really know how to associate with uh, people with albinism? Or, uh, I mean, how do you take that? having a community of people with albinism. Do you think they do that because they see um, they see what's Baba Valela Mapande so they then just try and connect or do you see it any other way? Uh, I mean, what do you take of that? So with me, I realize that it comes from having a safe space. You know, having a safe space where if you and I both have albinism, we both have mastermind struggles, we both understand what we have, you know, and um, it's often difficult for most to go out in a space with other different people. So uh, these communities are built or are, are there because of support for people to have a safe space to know where they can go to with whatever they're facing. So it's it's not unlikely, but um, there are people with albinism who have a lot of communities that they could fight in, and mostly it's because of the exclusion. You know, when you get to a place and you've been excluded, people are moving there, they don't want to sit with you, and the moment you find someone who looks like you, you get there. And I feel like it also happens with the languages that we speak. When you get into a place, and you find people, someone is speaking Sizulu, someone else is speaking Sibedi, and I, as a baby person, I get there. Obviously, I'm going to be drawn to a person whom I relate to, you know? So I think also it's more, the, the biggest thing I feel like it's the safe space mm. that it provides, because remember that also the killing of people with albinism, yeah. it gets to a point where you don't know when you get into a space who's thinking what mm. who is informed about what so if now i get to a point where um i just get into spaces get into spaces it opens that thing of an uneasiness you know mm. it opens that thing of uneasiness because god forbid someone could be planning something about you so I think a lot of people get into those spaces because they feel safe and um, it's just that community that they are familiar with, that they feel safe with. Yeah. Yeah. So in, in terms of um in terms of the the your skin sensitivity, um we know that uh, your skin is then sensitive because of lack of melanin. Um, what, what, what then do you do to keep your, your skin safe from the sun rays and, and whatever which may be detrimental to your skin? What, what do you do? What safety measures do you take? So with me, honestly, I just um, try to stay away from things with fragrances, starting from what I bought with with the lotions I use on my skin and I think um, our skin burns so easily because if you get something, a lotion or a bar of soap that has all these chemicals, all these fragrances detrimental to our skin burns you know, in these um, there's this one product that I used and I used on my face, after using it I was so red, you could see that my face burns because that um so had a lot of chemicals, you know. But mm. other people, because of the melanin that they have, they use it and yeah. they're okay. And also from the sun, I wear long sleeves. I'm not. Mm. I'm, my skin is always almost covered, unless I'm inside the house. Or you see, I'm recording with me. Yes, you see, I'm <laughs> in the house. <laughs> and yeah. sometimes it, it's so funny where you get even the heat in the house. Mm -hmm. burns your skin oh like that's how i 
think my skin is so thin. I also just have really thin skin. Mm -hmm. I have thin skin where I need to get burnt by the heat in the house by the heat in the car. Mm -hmm. You know, and I and literally have to apply sunscreen when you're going out, whether you're in the shade, anything, you need to apply sunscreen because of the heat that's around. So and I wear hats. Mm -hmm. I'm always wearing my hats. With hats I always have an umbrella with me. And yeah, that's how I wash my hands too. Okay. So that's basically what um, everyone with albinism should be doing to protect their skin. So do you think you you normally see quite a number of people with albinism just walking, just walking with, without any hat, short sleeves, um, not to say you are... You, you know exactly why they do that, but do you think they are doing that because of they are not educated about their skin? 100% because you, you need to, you, any like any condition, you need to know what's going on because now as a mom, let's say I'm a mom, I just had a child with albinism, I don't know what I don't even know what to call the condition. You know, I mm. feel like um, hospitals, clinics, and yeah, those places need to really start giving education to new moms with kids with autism mm. on how to protect the child's skin. I don't know if that happens or if it's not happening, but if it is happening, it needs to be done a lot more. And if it's not happening, it needs to be done because if you see from my my childhood i've known that i should not be in the sun i've known that i should always wear long sleeves my friends have known that you can't play with her in the sun you always need to be in the shade so i feel like it's instilled from the parent if the parent knows how to take care of the child's skin then the child will ultimately know that okay this happens and there's actually there, there actually was a case a few years ago of this lady um back home mm -hmm. in Limpopo where um her skin was bent so bad and her skin cancer had progressed to a point where her nose was falling off yeah. her ear was falling off and that is just ultimately because of the sun and ultimately because um she couldn't take care of her skin and that's where inclusion comes now if we're in a workspace and you know that you're dealing with someone who has albinism why are you having them talk to you in the sun mm. if you guys are having um a job fair or something why are there no gazebos why are the why are they not in a place where it can accommodate people with albinism because Sometimes we are all not so fortunate to apply online, get a job, and that's it. Yeah. You now have to go wait long queues. You can even look at the Sussex case that I did, where you see someone, that person has albinism, but nothing is being done. Mm -hmm. No one is even coming outside to say, can I please have um, people with old age, uh, people with albinism, any person who has a disability to go in front and be assisted. You know, you even see that from the top, from the government, a lot of people are not informed about this. And it's the little things. I literally, I can't even sit five minutes in the sun. Mm -hmm. Whether I have my hat or my umbrella, it's, it gets too much. So imagine waiting in a Sasa client queue. Mm -hmm. How long those queues are. So maybe, or maybe people with albinism, um, if if we have measures in place to 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 maybe to attend to them first, if maybe you see that uh, the queue will be in the sun, like let them take precedence. Yes, like any like elderly people, like any other person with disability, and um, it's 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 something that they don't take note. Even a simple thing is it takes rank. In a queue, 
you wait that long queue sympathize there's no shade you know and i think that's where the education should come in because you see people pregnant women they are able to get in line first people with disabilities are able to get first in line but the overlooked people are mm. and and they, you're not sorry and you're not like um saying uh, you, you don't want to wait in the queue but you just don't want to be in the sun Exactly. if maybe it's inside that uh, you can wait like, you know like anybody else time. because now i'm not in harm's way my mm. biggest harm or my biggest enemy uh, is the sun you know like anybody else i can stand in any queue at the bank although it annoys me i'll stand in the queue if it's indoors i'm not burning mm. or anything like that but i feel like we need to um especially when we are in positions of leadership because that's where it starts if a leader is informed if a leader knows then these are the people the type of people or the conditions or the people with this condition come into my space i need to make sure that they are well taken care of mm. you know but um it's it's very overlooked it's something that is very overlooked and people just think ah no she has a hat so she's fine it's not like that yeah yeah it is really not like that yeah so what would you say to um maybe a new parent a new mom um or new parent um who have just um received um a baby with autism stay out of the sun <laughs> i think that's the biggest thing and sometimes it's sad because you want your child to be included when the kids play outside but you don't have that luxury i think we need to understand that you don't have the luxury that your child can go swimming your child can go play in whatever field or whatnot where there is no play so you need to take it upon yourself to teach your child and to be okay with it as a parent to say my child cannot go there mm -hmm. for as sad as it may feel but you need to take care of your child's skin with me my parents tried very hard to let my friends know and they understood you always you would always play a hole in the yard because there was shade mm. you know they would say no let your friends come over you know we don't like having kids in the yard because they make a lot of mess and and and, and. but when you understand the reason that you're doing that for mm. it becomes clear so stay out of the sun don't don't say it's only for five minutes because that five minutes if you times it by all the five minutes that your child is going to be in the sun for for the rest of their life is equal to skin cancer yeah and it's sad because i'm 23 don't have skin cancer but I, there are times that i've burned in the yard and 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 the possibility of me having skin cancer when i'm older is very high because it's something that progresses it's something that is that they might start off no skin cancer or whatnot, but a lot of people who get to an elderly age, a lot of people with autism who get to an elderly age without facing skin cancer are very likely. You know, so as a young parent or as a new parent, please keep your child out of the sun. Always wear long sleeves, always have sunscreen. It's not it's not going to be lovely treating um your child when they have uh, burnt skin and it's really painful mm. it is very painful i remember this one time i my forehead actually turned orange <laughs> and it was because of a school trip you know mm. we went on a school trip it was a trip at a water park mm. so kids are turning we're going to the pool and kids are turning i also i'm also feeling cold i want to be in the sun and I was in the sun and I feel like also it was um, up to my educators because I was really young well, you know when you're young you mm. want to do what your friends are doing mm. so I was in primary and I was doing what other kids are doing and I feel like the monitoring wasn't as it was supposed to be because um, knowing if my mom was if any of my family members were there 
they're going to no you can't you can't be in the sun you need to be in the shade you know and another thing with me what i've what i've seen is that my skin gets so bad to chronic like sun mm. i get literally last december we went out with friends to we were swimming and i was in the shade right my upper body was in the shade my feet were in the sun but mm. i was in the water and i just went out i was burnt literally i had mm. burnt mm. marks so it's that deep mm. it is that deep apply sunscreen that sunscreen is good for you wash your face when you get home bath if you have to you know so then reapply again so constantly When you wear your hat, it does not give you leeway to go be in the sun. Mm. No, don't wear your hat and be in the sun because it's still the same. You're gonna get burned. Mm. Try to be out of the sun as much as possible and also include an intrusion, guys. When you have friends with albinism, include them in your activities. Like, have activities that will not put them in harm's way because sometimes we do certain things because. We feel excluded. We go to certain places because ah, if I don't go there with my friends, what can I do? Mm. You know, so we need inclusion in society. We need inclusion in the workspace. We need to be included. Mm. Okay. Um. So the uh some of the terms or some of the names um people in the society. So, we, we, which, which, which of the names could, could, could be better, not to say the, 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 the five, but better? I wouldn't say, like, it, it goes from person to person, like, literally, and I feel like, address, address someone with their names, guys. Yeah. No? Like, address someone with their name, regardless, I won't. Like, you can't, it's like calling someone with diabetes, calling them diabetes. Mm. It's like calling someone with a fit legal, fit legal, like literally when I see you, fit legal, fit legal. So people tend to use the name um, albino, that albino girl. It's like saying that diabetic girl, like why am I supposed to be referred to with my condition or whatever I, I mm. have? No, Lerato. Yeah. No, what's her name? No, the girl that was wearing the pink dress. Mm. See what I'm like, at least see what I'm wearing. At least see the bag that I was holding. Mm. But I don't, I, I literally, with me personally, if you call me Albino, I wouldn't be mad because I feel like that's the least you could do. Because mm. some people have like really bad terms that they call people with. Also, that is only for me, but I would say to the majority, just refer to people with their names. Don't refer to anybody as an albino, as, you know. Um, if you don't know the name, ask. Yeah, if you don't know, hi, Lato, yes. Um, if you, you know, sometimes you don't get someone's name and you want to talk about it. Like, no, man. Um, the girl that works in insurance that you were with, mm. the no, man, the, the, the tutor. The tutor that you were with, then at least, but the moment, and it said that with a skin condition, it's what people see. It's not like any other condition that's inside that people can't see, so they can't really refer you to yeah. your con uh, with your condition or by your condition. So yeah. just try those people's names or call them by the color of the t-shirt. The girl, the guy who's wearing the pink t-shirt. Mm. Okay. All right, I think that was very good. Was it boring? <laughs> it was. It's my everyday life. <laughs> I think. Okay. When you have albinism, the first thing people ask you is about albinism. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, I'm, I'm hoping that we will have another sit down soon, um, because I didn't even ask.
ask you to introduce yourself to my audience. So I think that's gonna happen. Our next sit down. Um, at least I'm lucky. You don't charge me. Hi guys, and I'm coming very expensive. Ah, la, la. <laughs> so yeah, thank you for coming. Um, we'll be looking forward to uh, checking the comments. What people are saying yeah. and um are you on socials <laughs> not really no no, <laughs> no. okay if yeah. you see yeah. my tiktok don't like or don't even follow me <laughs> <laughs> i have to deactivate that no mm. i've literally i've cut down um a platform that i'm on is twitter but not really for following or anything it's just for mm. news and so do you want to promote your twitter no guys i'm not you're not gonna find anything from me on twitter mm -hmm. i don't put out content i yeah yeah mm -hmm. next time when i'm ready next time i'm not gonna be happy <laughs> <laughs> okay thank you so much Lerato. thank you Lerato. see you next time